On tonight's episode of Words From My Face, we're talking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, our five favorite projects. We're talking about the Assassin's Creed movie. And is every video game going to be delayed forever and ever? Stay tuned. <laughs> Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. going on everybody welcome words to my face my name is brian with me as always producer extraordinaire brendan you and we are the one and only home of the chewbacca chainsaws <laughs> and i hope most people were not watching it live because i messed up that intro like you won't see it after we cut it out but i probably did it like four times like just absolutely horrible i might have exaggerated how many times i did it horrible but i did it a lot bad and that's how it's to leave in the bad ones, just to show everybody no, how you do things. Don't don't leave in the bad ones. Don't don't leave in the bad that's ones. The power of it. <laughs> you don't need to or see not. the bad ones. <laughs> you forget I also can edit. Ha ha. Nobody expects me to edit. Nah, yeah, know. but I still retain the copies. I'll just keep posting them forever. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a war post, repost, post, repost. Oh man. But yeah, so on tonight's show, uh, we are bringing you our top five. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles projects, because yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the CGI slash live action movie just got released. Um, we're going to be talking about the Assassin's Creed movie, because Michael Fassbender just did an interview, dropped a few details. Excited about that. And we're going to be talking about all these video game delays, because there seems like there's been a million, especially this year. But we'll talk about if that's bad or good for gaming. But let's start it off this week, same way we start off every week. And that's an unfortunate thing. Because that means it's time for Horrible Movie of the Week. <laughs> yeah, and Brennan likes, likes this because he can do that crazy laugh. He, he's, like the, he's like, can we fit this into the sports show somehow? Just so I can do that. And I'm like, I don't know, man. It doesn't really fit our sports motif. It would. It would if you just let me think of it. <laughs> but yeah, so so this week I have had the pleasure of killing myself watching the Raven, and that is <laughs> the Raven. Yes, yes. And this was uh, another John Cusack's movie, and John Cusack and The Rock seem to pop up on every week of Horrible Movie of the Week. It's not my fault you guys make bad movies that just seem to get released, but yeah, and so this this story centers around, like it says in the very beginning of the movie, not much is known about Edgar Allan Poe the couple days before his death. Uh, yeah, he kind of disappeared, but then he like they found him like drunk and dead in a gutter. So did he I even think. disappear? I thought they just found him drunk in a gutter one night. Like, and like that's probably it. They found him drunk in a gutter. So they're trying to make a bunch of stuff where there isn't. But so this movie centers around Edgar Allan Poe, um, of course. He is the depressed guy. They they actually don't make him as depressed as they should in this movie. Like, when you think of Edgar Allan Poe, you just think of, like, the most depressed figure in literature in the American 1800s. I don't, in fact. I think that there's plenty more depressed figures. Nope. He's the most depressing. He died of, Call like, him. liver failure or something in a gutter. Oh, yeah. Like, there's yeah, others. But, like, that, he also had, like, like three died. wives die on him. Didn't he have, like, three wives die on him? Yeah, no, that that makes that's that makes him sympathetic. Like, not three wives, but three women in his life. Like oh, yeah. his wife, his mother, someone else. Like two wives at least. Maybe. Two. Like everyone of cancer or something like that. Yeah, and, and that sucks. That's no fun. Or so, the same so. disease anyway. Like his mother and his wife died of the same disease. Which is never any fun. But yeah, so this movie surrenders centers around him and it's supposed to be the last couple of days before he died. And what hap seems to be happening is uh, there's a guy running around enacting a lot of his murders uh, from his books and stories and putting them out in public, and the police decide to get 
Edgar Allan Poe to help him solve the crime. So, yeah, let's just uh, let's just get get right into it. Um, as I mentioned, it's the worst written intro ever because they're like, oh, there's some mystery mystery surrounding the last three days of his life. I don't think there was. You're making crap up. Um, apparently, Poe went around picking at dead cats. They show him doing that once or twice in the movie, and it's like, it's a dead cat on the street. Leave it alone. I don't know about what you guys thought, but back in the day... Edgar Allan Poe was not a fan of dead cats, but he liked to poke them. Yeah, he just uh, tries to, yeah, poke just at him. Just to rub it in. Like, hey, you're a dead cat. What you get? And, and so one of, the, one of the, the big scenes where they're trying to set up his, like, character, he's in a pub, of course, they're like, oh, he's a drunkard, he doesn't pay his bills, blah, blah, blah. And um, he starts mouthing off to this guy who's just, like, a huge guy, and it's like, you know, this isn't going to end well, man. Why, why would you do that? And what, your jokes aren't even that funny. So... Well, he's drunk. He thinks they're funnier than they actually are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he has a pet raccoon. I thought that was a cool part of the movie. Yeah, pet raccoon. Not, Makes a, sense, not a pet right? raven or something? Nope, pet raccoon. Uh, those pet are, that's raccoon. an animal I don't think can be domesticated. So that's impressive if he did. It was a pretty domesticated raccoon if it looked like to me. So, uh, yeah, pet raccoon. I guess I guess that's a one to the positive section of of this movie having a pet raccoon. Uh, yeah, so uh, you get a you get a plus there. They really died of rabies. Uh, it might make sense, if, especially if he has raccoons running around and he likes to poke at dead cats. So you never know. <laughs> yeah, both you those know. things are not exactly good for your uh, good for your health. They don't. But, yeah, they don't lead to long lives. I don't think. Uh, you know, hey, I'm no doctor though. Um, now they have a horrible romance in this movie. Of course, he's like going with his like third or fourth woman that they're afraid is gonna die and well, whatever. You know, it's she's not actually sick in the movie. It's just you know, it's like okay, they're setting up Edgar Allan Poe to be with this woman. Of course, it's gonna end tragically somehow or another. So yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, and is it just me or do you also hate all ballroom scenes from the 1800s? They're just so stiff and annoying, and they always look the same. And really what they don't tell you is like, hey, this is just all the rich people and they get together and have fun and laugh at all the poor people. It's like I hate ballroom scenes, especially set in the 1800s. Name I one good ballroom scene. One. I, I don't even watch them. So, but I only didn't even think Edgar Allan Poe was that high class. I mean, maybe he was. Maybe he was a drunkard wrong. and he was broke. I, so. I mean, he was a writer. He wasn't in Baltimore uh but that's about that's all I I don't know. Yeah, it, well, I didn't he, think he, was that, he ends uh, up he ends up at a ballroom scene once. It, it's he's really an orphan. So yeah, but it, it ties know. in with one of his stories. I'm not trying to get into the spoilers of the movie, but it's horrible. It's stupid. I'm um, just saying I didn't think he was he, he. I'm pretty sure he had financial difficulties. He wasn't like a high yeah, class guy. Like I said, he was broke and he was <laughs> he was a drunkard and broke. That's what he did. Um, but yeah, and this movie likes to play connect the dots. Like every now and then, they're like, okay, we're gonna push, 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 push through the story. There's no real, there's nothing really motivating them to keep moving forward. And then they're like, okay, stop. And Edgar Allan Poe so is to figure out everything that's been going on in the past ten minutes of the movie. And then they go, go, go for another ten minutes, and then stop. All right, Edgar, figure out what just happened in the past ten minutes. It gets really annoying, and it's like you use some other sort of plot device to move the the plot forward, and uh, they just don't. So. Yeah, that was that. Um, and Alice Eve is in this movie. She plays the love interest for John Cusack's Edgar Allan Poe. And I just got to say this. She is way too pretty to be with John Cusack. Sorry, John. <laughs> just wouldn't happen in real life. Too fake. Too fake. But yeah, so that's the horrible movie of the week. It's going to kind of be abbreviated from what we normally do. But um, yeah. It gets a two out of five. Oh. Oh. And the real reason we're actually cutting it short a little bit, um, not only because it was just a horrible movie and it wasn't fun to review, and yeah, but uh, unfortunately, uh, actually just like two hours before the show started, we got some bad news. Unfortunately, legendary actor slash voice, voice actor Robin Williams has passed away at the age of 63. Uh, there's not 100% details coming out, but it is believed to be a suicide, unfortunately, and... Um, it's just really sad to see these comedic actors, and it, it, it always seems to be comedic actors, 
uh, that really seem to take the depression side of things, and they, they're a little bit more unbalanced, or I don't know what it is. I think it's something about being that comic genius you are throws the rest of you off kilter, and unfortunately, uh, we've lost a legend. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I mean, it's not only even the the comic ad- actors, it just seems like a lot of good actors um, tend to fall that route. I mean, I can think Heath Ledger uh, yeah. several years ago uh, after well, I was playing... thinking about like, Chris Farley and, and John Belushi. Maybe they didn't die of suicide per se, but they, you know, OD'd on something. That's a form of suicide, mm-hmm. really, if you look at it, but... Yeah, 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 and, and I guess uh, there's not a whole lot you can say about that. I mean, obviously, uh, the suicide and depression is a terrible thing. Um, we don't have all the details yet, though, so we shouldn't really, we can't really uh, say too much on that. That's what I said. I said it wasn't 100 percent out there. I just said. I that. know. I'm letting. It, I'm reiterating for everyone that maybe we're not going to go too much into it, just because hey, maybe it's going to turn out to be something completely different. Uh, yeah. Um, we only got the rumors right now, right? Yeah. We just know that he's dead. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately. And, is... and, I mean, yeah, he did things like uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. I, I remember loving that movie growing up. Uh, one of the greatest voice actors out there, especially, like, with his turn with as Genie in the Aladdin was here movie. That was pretty awesome. Like, Genie was never the same after Robin Williams left that role. Uh, I mean... And not only that, but... um. Uh, it seemed like uh, the later year, like the last decade or so, he moved on and he was trying to like ease into more serious roles and he showed that he could take those on uh, pretty well. well I mean, he, he was a Juilliard graduate, so I mean, yeah. Juilliard is a big performing arts school, so you have to be able to be doing something right to be out, coming out of there. Definitely. Um, it was just to say that he was able to break away from the, the mold of being just a uh, a comic actor, and even a lot of his stuff during his, what we would call comedy time, uh, he showed a lot of depth to, to all his characters, and it was mm-hmm. more serious than that. Like, I guess mm-hmm. you would say, Good Morning Vietnam, he's kind of a, a funny, edgy character, but it's not enti- It's not like it's a strictly a comedy movie. Yeah, like, it has some funny elements to it, but they're trying to br- hammer home a, a, an important point. I mean, Patch Adams, another one of those movies. Yeah. Yes, he brought some levity to the, the movie, but it wasn't a comedy movie, I wouldn't say. Uh, yeah. and, and it really does take a really good actor to be able to, to bridge that gap between comedy and drama, because I mean, if you look at some of these actors that try to do that back and forth, they're great in a comedy movie, and then they're just horrible in a drama. I mean, I hate to say this to you, Jim Carrey, but you're one of those. <laughs> when you try to do a serious mess, it doesn't work. And when you do a funny one, it's usually gold. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he was a rare talent, Robin Williams was. He definitely was. That, to, be, to say the least, he was a rare talent. And we'll miss him. Um, and our hopes and our, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family, you know. Hope they, that they can pull through this all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I died at the age of uh, 63, we said, right? 63, yeah. I'm I'm honestly a little bit surprised that he was that young because I guess he's just been acting for so long. Like, um, that's. Well, I think his big break was in the '80s when he was on the TV show Mork yeah. and Mindy, and then you know he's had his own stand-up career. He's had just a billion movies and TV shows and stuff he's done. So he's been out there a lot, that's for sure. But yeah, so that's our sad part of the 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 show. So R.I.P. to you, Robin Williams. Um. Yeah, so yeah, I don't. I, it's hard to segue out of that. It, why, it is. That's um, why I hate doing death announcements because I mean you got to do them, but it just kind of brings down. Maybe we should start doing these at the end of the show from now on. Probably. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do from now on. End of the show. Yeah. So let's let's roll that over to uh, some. Uh, see, now I can't segue from it. It's your fault, Brendan. All right, here's how we segue. Do it distastefully by first <laughs> talking about how we can't segue, talking about our show, and then talking about, what I don't know, talk about? other death-related things uh, like assassins. Oh, uh, okay. Well, hey, speaking of assassins, <laughs> uh, the Assassin's Creed movie, yeah, that's a thing. That's going to happen. Um, uh, a couple months ago, you heard that Michael Fassbender actually signed on to star, and he's also going to be a producer in the film. They did go out and get themselves a director, Justin Krusel, Krusel, 
um, which should be, be a good person to pick. And the reason we're talking about it is because recently Michael Fassbender sat down with IGN to do an interview about his new movie Frank, uh, which is a musical of some sort, which is kind of interesting. Um, but he, they asked him some details about what he was thinking uh, for... Oh, one second. Is it a musical about Frankenstein? I, I don't know. I, I'm not gonna, I didn't want to get into it. I saw a musical and I said, okay, let's just leave that on that side and I'll be on this be hilarious. side. Uh, Imagine well, Frankenstein dancing around singing. That could be terrible or hilarious or both. I did already have to watch a horrible movie of the week called I Frankenstein, so looks like Frank is on its way to my list. <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, but yeah. So he sat he sat down with uh, IGN and he kind of let some details slip. Nothing, nothing big, but he kind of kind of gave you some setting. Now, uh, when asked uh, pretty much, like, is this going to follow the game's stories or is this going to follow more of its own story, he kind of said, well, it's going to be a little bit of both. You know, it's going to take some of the elements from the game and it's going to reimagine them a little bit. So when I first heard that, a big red, like, flash went off, like, oh, warning, warning, warning. And it really brought me down because it's going to be turned into a video game movie. And when I say that, I only mean the worst things. You don't call a video game movie a video game movie unless it's bad. Uh, we did a list last year, I think it was, our top five worst video game movies of all time. I need to dig that out somewhere. And yeah, they're never good. It just seems like whatever, whenever you try to get a studio trying to compress a game, which is usually at the very least ten hours of storytelling to two hours, an hour and a half, it just never quite works right. I, no, see, I don't know about that. Um, name, name a game. Name a game that's been turned name into a game movie. movie. Yeah, name one. Uh, when they strictly try to stick by the script of the game. No, but they're not trying to strictly uh, stick yeah, by the script. Yeah, the but they're trying to keep the same that's story. That's what he said. That's that's fine. But they're talking. No. They said reimagine. That's what you expect in a movie for anything. That's what you do when you translate from books to movies, typically. Um, or from a TV show to a movie. That's it's typical to you take basically the same storyline, but you switch things up, you switch them around to make it fit better as a movie to mm. to give you something new. Some people I, the only thought, time I well, really feel like this the comic works. Books did. That's what the comic book movies did. Well, that's that's this that's where I feel where it works. Well, comic book movies are different. I mean, they have a damn they damn near have the storyboard right up in front of you to draw from. If you can't make a good comic book movie, there's yeah, usually something the same wrong thing. With you. They, they follow the original a little bit and yeah. they reimagine certain my, aspects of it. In my opinion, bit. the only decent video game movies that, that come out are usually the ones where they take something and they they change it from the main setting of the video game and they put it somewhere else. Like, for instance, the Assassin's Creed universe. Apparently, this you can find DNA memories of people all the way, you know, back as, as far as, you know, the, the Crusades. Why, why not? You know, you have Michael Fassbender. He's a good British actor. They had some interesting, like, a Victorian era Assassin's Creed or, you know, something like that. You can take it out of the setting they've already played it in and put it somewhere else so you could really develop your own unique and original story that, yeah, it... it you know, it, it borrows some faucets of the game, but it doesn't borrow the story faucets. It borrows more of the setting character faucets of the story. Uh, yeah, that's fine, but I think it can be done. I don't know. I, I, I would like to see what happens because there's plenty you can do. And yeah, you're right. Video game movies in general, games based off of video games in general, have a terrible track record. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not helped by the, the precedent. Like some of the biggest ones ever made, you think, uh, this, particularly Super Mario Bros., you know, that probably sets everything up to be even worse because less people after that kind of failure and other failures were going to even try to make a, video game, a movie based off a video game. And the only people are going to go into it are people that are going to have a low budget and don't really care what they're doing and they're just like, yeah, we're going to put out crap we're just going to do on the name. So I don't, I think they've, they've kind of got into a slump like that because I don't think that they have to be bad. Mm, just I, have... I agree, they don't have to be bad, but generally speaking, they are bad. I mean, your favorite movie of all time, I understand In the Name of the King is kind of a based off of a video game, but it's alright. Based off a of video game? What video game? 
the Dungeon Siege series. That's Dungeon Siege cool. in the name of the king. No. That's not a video game series. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it is? is? I didn't uh, even know and that. So I'm looking for a new producer who knows stuff about video games and movies. So if you'd like to be said producer, hit me up on... <laughs> Don't let well, I know that out. his his other one, Blood Rain, he had uh, Blood Rain, which was also a game. That's that, a Uwe that's Bowl, right yeah. There. Yeah, Blood um, Rain, uh, Uwe Which Bowl. was also... House of the Dead. Bowl. I mean, again, these are all ones that he tried to base right off of the video games, and it didn't work at all, so... Yeah, but that's just because that was a terrible director. Well, yeah, who did that's, stupid that's things. It. Like, there was no... There was nothing helping that. Again, the only people willing to go into video game um, movie making are these terrible, terrible... Uh, uh, studios and directors and whatever that. But we are um, seeing things like uh, I mean they're making a The Last of Us video, a movie, which again I hope they don't base it strictly off of they take the setting, not the exact characters. Um, and then you have the the War, Warcraft movie that looks pretty cool. So we'll see how they do that. But but yeah, but you know what? Let us know what you think. Are you excited about this new video game movie? Are you not? Um, uh, do you think we really even know anything? Because Fastbender, like I said, it was very few details, not many, just that it was going to be kind of taken from the same story. I mean, how do you think it's going to pan out? Should Is Brendan right? Am I right? Um, go ahead and let me know that I'm right in comments down below. If you think Brendan's right, just go ahead and chop off your fingers and never type anything, ever. <laughs> no, go ahead and type <laughs> down below. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hit us up in comments down below, of course, at Words for My Face on Twitter, Words for My Face at gmail.com, Words for My Face.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. Hit us up, let, let us know what you think um, on, you know, on any of the video game topic. But let's take that and let's roll that into probably my favorite IP from the late 80s, early 90s is the Ninja Turtles. And uh, we're talking about that because the big Ninja Turtles movie just released last week. Did great in the box office. And so I thought this was a good opportunity for us just to run down our top five Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles projects of all time. And um, it's just, it's such a great idea. I mean, whoever was, I mean, granted, Acid was definitely involved when somebody came up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know how it could not be involved. Who the hell is sitting around their apartment saying, hey, you know what? Let's let's pretend this green stuff fell on these turtles, and they grew up, but they were already teenagers, and they learned karate from a rat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the official story is the original creators were joking around while drunk, um, but that that may acid. be the cleaned up version. <laughs> no, on acid. But the official story, I think, is that they were drunk. Uh, that's about all I know about the official story, and it was supposed to be a joke. Well, it um, was the greatest joke of all time, because it turned it was, out great for yeah. them. It was also they like, laughed all the way to the bank. <laughs> it was also originally a, a parody of several other um, comic book series that were popular at the time, uh, including some of, like, because uh, it was also a lot darker originally, so it was actually also a parody of Frank Miller's Ronin, which I was kind of surprised to see uh, some Frank Miller stuff thrown uh, was an inspiration for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but um, I haven't read Ronin, so I guess something. I, I guess the name that's sounds like it makes sense. It's where the ninja part comes from, I'm guessing, but I don't know. Are you there? Brian, I can't hear you. I can see your lips moving. There's no words coming out of your mouth. There's nothing going up and down either. I guess I'm gonna have to go through the top five while Brian figures out his uh, his microphone situation because he's definitely muted. Okay, so uh, my top five teenage mutant ninja Tur teenage mutant ninja turtles. We'll start off with uh, I don't know the comic books five. Now let's just talk about the comic books. They were uh, based off of several other comic books in parody format. Uh, Wikipedia tells me the list of comics include Marvel Comics' Daredevil uh, and New Mutants, uh, Dave Sims' Cerebus. Cerebus? Cerebus? Cerebrus? Who knows? And Frank... I guess it depends on your accent. Uh, and Frank Miller's Brian returns. Really yeah, scratchy. 
Did I? Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you. You sound terrible. Well, not now. You sound better. Now I don't hear you at all. Okay. Well, we, we, you, you do have that ready. Uh, you can't. You can't. I you can't hear me at all. I can hear you now. Okay. All right. Did you break so, another microphone? Did you break no, another I, microphone? You I did this a couple microphone. weeks ago too. No, it wasn't a couple weeks ago. It was last week, but it wasn't me. I didn't touch this microphone. But okay, so let's do our top five list for Ninja Turtles. Well, I already did my, my number five. My number five number ended five. up being the comic book series. Okay, so number five is his comic book series. Um, well, let's just go through your list. The original then. comic book series. Okay, the original, the original comic book series for you. Yeah. All right, what's your number four? Uh, my number four... Well, Am I going through my entire list, or are you yeah, gonna? Yeah, let's just go through your whole list. All right, all right. Number four uh, has got to be um, the. It, everyone's gonna be surprised by this one, but it's purely because of stupid nostalgia. Whatever arcade game was at Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah, the 1980s arcade game. Yeah. I don't even know if it was the like because they had several arcade games of it. Whatever was it at Chuck E. Cheese during the 1990s. Yeah, well, that was that was the that was the one I think everybody everybody likes. Where the first level you're fighting through a burning building to save April, and then Shredder kidnaps her. I don't think there was any burning building at Chuck E. Cheese. I remember the like, um, the big guy showing up in April and Neil does like a news report at the beginning. That was Turtles in Time, dude. No, I know Turtles in Time. That's I don't think so. I don't think this was Turtles in Time, though, that I played at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> All right, well, let's go to your number three. Because I've played Turtles in Time plenty. Um, <clears throat> number three is going to be the, the first movie. Okay. Because that was pretty good. Solid, uh, solid first live-action movie in the, uh, I yeah. believe, 86, uh, 87, somewhere 88, somewhere in there. I think it was in the 90s, maybe. Mm-hmm. Early, like, Because uh, MC Hammer was did the soundtrack for it. Yeah, uh, but... Number two came out in 1990, so... Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, MC Hammer was, was in there, though. That was kind of funny, because uh, cause his career went downhill later, and so did some other rappers that have been involved with the series. I don't know. Um, but it had, like, terrible called. lines, but it was fun. Uh, and it introduced you to the Turtles. You know, mm-hmm. that's cool. Um, number two is going to be uh, Turtles in Time. Okay. Because I love that game. Like, because I, I don't think it was the well, Turtles in Time. Sorry, I'll I'll be even more specific. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo. And actually, I don't like the HD remake, the reshelled version, or some of the others. Right, it was good. Shut up. It was still good. It was not. Don't hate on it. It was good. It was very good. Well, made the Super Nintendo it. version much better, at least. I, I yeah. loved. I still love the one on Xbox because it let me play it again. So. I strike right. down your motion. Uh, it was terrible. Uh, okay. But the Super Nintendo one, what made it superior was, one, it had extra levels, which was awesome, and there's some great, the Tetradome, um, or whatever they called it, but it was great, um, had some extra levels, and the controls were spot on, the sound was just, like, cool, like, they cleaned up the audio in the, the HD remake, and for some reason I didn't like it as much. It wasn't as charming or whatever, but maybe it was just... Ruin my nostalgia. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, um, but number one, am I going for number one? Go for number one. The, all right, number one's going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two: The Secret of the Use. Because yep. we used to watch that's that the greatest movie non-stop. of all time. Um, greatest you know, movie actually, of all time. Yeah. Actually, at one point, I mm-hmm. remember our parents were trying to to send that movie, the VHS, to the junkyard. And I said, no, I took it, and I think I still have it in a drawer somewhere. Well, there you go. And it's just awesome. Like, we, we watched it so much. I remember loving that movie. Um, I've watched it again since I was a kid. I still like it. I still love it. Great it's great stuff. So, yeah, well, here, let me jump into my top five list, and it's going to sound very familiar to you. You are correct. Uh, my number five on the list is actually uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1, the first live-action movie. Um, I love that movie. It really did kick off all the turtles, but... It wasn't the greatest Turtles movie all of all time. I think I already told people what that one was. Uh, but number four, I have the Turtles 80s arcade game. Again, the one you played in Chuck E. Cheese when you were a kid or, or Sports Zone or wherever. So 
pretty much we're back to <laughs> we're pretty close, similar to 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 our lists. Uh, number three was my the '80s slash '90s cartoon, because that I mean, I got to watch the live action movie and then I got to watch the cartoon. I mean, it was just all the turtles coming together it was just awesomeness. So I love that. Uh, number two was my Turtles in Time, and I do have on there for the SNES because that was the best version of all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in Time movies as said by Brendan. And my number one is the same as his, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze, because it is the great mo greatest movie of all time. You want action? You got action. You want comedy? You got comedy. You want drama? Plenty of drama. You want, you want mutants? mutants? It's got mutants. It's you want got teenagers? Mutants. It's got teenagers. You, you want, want ninjas? Rats? You got rats. <laughs> you want ninjas? It's got ninjas. Turtles? You want pizza? It's got pizza. I mean, it's got, it's you want New everything. York? It's got New York. It's got everything. So yeah, you and I do have attractive a couple, reporters. I do have yeah. a couple uh, um, honorable mentions, and there was a TMNT. They they actually called it that. It was a CGI movie came out like seven eight years ago. That wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. And uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, uh, a little known game from a lot of people, but it was actually actually like their own Street Fighter version of the Tur Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I love that game. So yeah, those are mine. Let us know if we missed anything. What are you? What's your top five list of Turtles projects? What do you think? Uh, hit us up in comments down below. Of course, at what's my face on Twitter, what's my face at gmail.com. Uh, there's always Google Plus and Facebook, and uh, of course our website, what's my face .com. So hit us up, and let us know. And if you happen to mention the the live action TV series, you and I might be the only people that remember it. I remember it too, but it was not good. So it only lasted one death. season. <laughs> Yeah, I just remember one of the turtles was driving around doing his own pirate radio. You yeah, know, like, I remember that too. I thought that was awesome. Pirate, 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 pirate radio. We drive around in a car. It's like, <laughs> and yeah, Fox Kids was encouraging that. pirate radio. That was awesome. <laughs> you know, so. But yeah, so yeah, that's our, that's our turtles projects right there. So let's move it on to a little segment that we like to call Quick Kids of the Night. This is where I let Brendan get a little creative. <laughs> this is his his DJ. I'm like, go ahead and mix it up with the slashes. All right. But yeah, so let's let's hit it off with the first quick kid of the night, and that is Tekken Seven game director is asking for fan feedback uh, while developing a new character, and he's going to be one of the first Arab characters for the series. So that's kind of interesting. So if you want to let them know what you think the character should be like, you can hit them up. I'm not going to tell you where, because I, really, I don't really know where. But I just thought that was cool. There's a lot of fan interaction going on with video games nowadays. I've got it. He should have a propeller. Propeller? Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Go for it. Just, just give him a propeller. He'll, he'll have a propeller. It allows him to float for a second. That's, that's what I'm going to go with. There that's you go. your suggestion. Right. Make a game with it. <laughs> Make a king with it. Uh, and let's move on to the next quick kid. And so uh, EA Access, we talked about it last week, is now available on Xbox One uh, with the four games. You can either get it at $5 for a month or $30 for a whole year, and you have access to four games, which are not very good right now. So yeah, Which game? They're, they're like off. last year's sports games, right? Yeah, yeah. there's a bunch you of... You can buy like, for less than $5. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about it yet. But it might be pretty cool in the future. Um, I could probably and then, find all four of those for five dollars for all of them. Yeah, well, probably. In fact, if you want to give them to me because you own them and need to get rid of them right now, I have five bucks. I'll pay you for it just to prove a point. But just really, I don't even want to because I don't even want them for five bucks. Like, come on. <laughs> but to prove a point. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is Assassin's Creed Monopoly is planned. I believe it'll be hitting uh, store shelves this fall. All right, that's, that's our second edgy week in a row. Monopoly. Like second I know they make a Monopoly for everything. I mean, and it's it's like uh yeah yeah there. Well, we talked about the Zelda Monopoly last week, so yeah. But I'm just saying, like Assassin's Creed, this is the first like mature. Um, murder-based thing that I can think of <laughs> that, uh, that Monopoly has gone with. So, but I don't know. I mean, so instead of pass and go, you would complete assassination, collect to $200. Yeah, something you, like that. You, you, what are the places going to be? Put your blade in blade. Congratulations. 
Yeah. Nah, you got me. You got me. I don't know that. But, yeah. So, let's move it on to next quick kid. And that is Young Justice. If you have not seen the show, it is a lot of fun. Um, it kind of, I don't think it has any comic book roots, but it kind of takes some of the sidekicks from a lot of superheroes uh, like Robin, Kid Flash, uh, Speedy, who turns into Red Arrow, and they throw them together as like a Justice League light team. And I think it's a very well done series. So the first season has come out on Blu-ray, or is coming out, August 12th on Blu-ray, so check that out if you haven't already. If you have Netflix like I do, I would recommend watching it there. If you're a big fan of those DC heroes, definitely check it out. It's worth a watch. You're not, you, you didn't like Young Justice? Nope. Mm -hmm. oh, they already have Teen Titans, don't they? Yeah, but it's different than Teen Titans. I know it's different, but why? Why bother? Uh, uh, it's a good show, alright? Don't hate on it, alright? It was a good show. I enjoyed it, but... Don't don't hit on Young Justice. It's a really good one. Like the same guy who did a lot with the Star Wars Clone Wars, I believe, had something to do with the Young Justice show. So definitely cool. Check it out Could if you have. He have had something to do with the Teen Titans. Say he it. didn't. He didn't. So hey. Right. But yeah, let's move it on to the last quick kid of the night. And that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the aforementioned movie, um, raked in 65 million in box office sales this weekend. Followed by Guardians of the Galaxy with 41.5, and rounding out the top three was Into the Storm with 18 million. So, uh, yeah, those are your box office chants for this week. And that was the Quick Kids of the Night. Yeah, so um, let's just take that and roll that into our final story of the night, and it is our video game story. And uh, just today, I believe, uh, there was the announcement that the shooter Evolve, uh, where you take one player who's the monster and four players who is a team hunting said monster, um, that game has been delayed outside of 2014. It should be hitting sometime in 2015. And now we're talking about this today because this seems to be a little bit of a trend. We, we see all these games and... and you know, I'm just waiting for it to start happening with movies, but they release these, they, they release dates for these things years in advance sometimes. And it just doesn't always make sense. It's like, well, you could probably get it done if nothing at all glitches in your entire development process in that amount of time. But it, it just doesn't seem like they're giving themselves leeway enough. And yeah, and I'll I just, tell you why that happens, though. Like, part of it's, you know, maybe bad planning, but a lot of it's probably just marketing and higher-ups setting a date, not necessarily knowing how long or what's reasonable to say for this, but they, they'll deliver the promises to keep the hype up. Yeah, and it's going to be unrealistic, so. Yeah, and I mean, and you know what? I don't see this as a bad thing necessarily. I think this is more of a good thing because how many times have we seen games that look like they're going to be awesome they hit right on their release date, and they come out, and they're just bugged to death. It reminded me of Fallout 3 New Vegas. When that game came out, Fallout 3 was amazing. Everybody loved it. It reinvigorated the Fallout franchise. Everybody wanted to run out and get it. And then you got your Fallout 3 New Vegas, and it didn't work. I mean, I don't know if it's still they fixed a lot of the bugs from the PlayStation 3 version that were out there. I know I played it on the 360. They patched it up pretty well after a while, but... It was just impossible to play, and so what would you would you rather see a game come out on that date, or would you like to see it, you know, be pushed back to when it's actually ready? And I'd say push it back to when it's actually ready. Yeah, I would say so too. I mean, be better if you. Sometimes you really probably do need to push things up a bit if things are getting uh dragging their feet a little bit too much. Um, but I can think like um, Sierra. You remember Sierra, the huge in the Point 90s like, yeah. and 80s. Point um, everything. Yeah, yeah, and they did other stuff since then. They did like the Spyro and Crash Bandicoot games and things like that. But um, if you ever, I don't know if you guys are familiar with YouTuber Metal Jesus Rocks. He's a big gamer, right? Who used to work at Sierra. He's noted that one of the uh, the disappointments for him about uh, about Sierra, even though he loved Sierra, was uh, one of their games. Um, they released and it was didn't work upon release and they knew it didn't work upon release but they had to meet a deadline and they included a patch on a floppy disk in the boxes that you would have to install um, beforehand so that they could meet that deadline and it still didn't work very well. Mm -hmm. um, 
and he noted that as like one of the the beginnings of their downfall. Uh, and as you guys know, eventually Sierra just got absorbed into Activision, and I think actually in the last like few days, there's been some uh, news. Yeah, some talk about them and, coming back. Yeah, but it's not going to be the same company, really. It's just whatever division of Activision, right, or whatever. But yeah, and so there was another game. Good. There was, uh, like, I, I do remember some of the, the, the delays uh, for Bioshock Infinite. That was supposed to come out one year, and then it got pushed back, like, four or five months. Well, that game came out. It was very polished. It wasn't very many bugs. It, it worked re- very well. And then I remember there was a game called Too Human, which got pushed back and pushed back and pushed back, and then when it came out, it was still absolutely horrendous. So, I mean, yeah, you know, it things always work. Too. Bioshock Infinite, great game, right? Everyone loves it. It didn't do well enough. The 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 publisher or the not the publisher but the uh, studio went under. So maybe they didn't that go under. Really they, hurt were them in the they, they were closing anyway. If you're they're closing anyway. Well, if you're making money though, you're not just going to close. You might. Yeah, you're knows? unlikely. You know, Less you're unlikely. unlikely, but you might. But yeah, like here's a list of games that have already been delayed from being released in 2014 to being released in 2015. Witcher 3 was a big one. The Order 1886, uh, Dying Light, Arkham Knight, one that just broke my heart seeing that it wasn't going to be out in time, but it was all right because I was going to get that for a next-gen system, and I don't have one of those yet. So, um, The Division, the really cool Tom Clancy game that was supposed to be out, I believe, like before summer this year, and it got pushed back a lot farther. You had a Mad Max game and the aforementioned Evolve. So... I mean, I really don't mind them pushing back games as long as the product that comes to market is a good product. Uh, you know, I just think that they should rein back the advertising machine and maybe not promise people these games to be released at this time when you know damn well they're not either either they're not going to be ready or it's just not going to be a finished product. Yeah. And I'm tired That's of seeing these day one DLC stuff because you do see that with a lot of different games. It's a little bit easier than Sierra did it with the floppy disk because they can work on the patch for it. But how many times have you put in a game and it's like you can't play it yet, uh, you have to download this huge patch for everything that didn't work that we sent out anyway, you know. So I'd, I'd rather them focus more on getting out the great, the good product than timelines. But if you already have the timeline out there, I do want them to stick with it. I mean, it's kind of a catch-22 for me because yeah, I mean, it's like you promised me. It's like you telling a little it. kid. It's like Sometimes telling the little kid, here's Christmas, and then when Christmas, right before it comes, like, no, no, we're pushing Christmas back in another five days. You can't yeah. have your Christmas yet. It's like, what? The anticipation, you've killed me. But definitely, like, sometimes, you you know, things happen. You don't know. Bugs come up. Uh, they're found late in the game, and they're they're critical, whatever, or you, you got a little too ambitious. You don't see what's coming, um, especially when you're playing things, you know, so many years ahead of time. You, you have no idea what's going to come up when the game's not even fully planned yet. Um, the, how do you know what's going to happen? Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you. It's probably better to make sure you get a, a finished product, a really polished product out. And you'll see it still kind of worked pretty well for, for companies like Valve, who are famous for just releasing whenever. Um, people are still waiting for Half-Life 3, for instance. Yeah. Uh, forever. <laughs> Um, on the other hand, you have things going badly sometimes, like Duke Nukem Forever, which took forever to come out. And it was, it was horrible. horrible. So, yeah, well, it missed its window. Like, it, it, it honestly, might not have been such a horrible that, game ten years ago, yeah. but it was just it, way out of its own time. It, it really wasn't that bad of a game. It just was not worth 15 years' wait, yeah, and it so. wasn't as good as Duke Nukem 3D. So you'd think that with this huge anticipation... And polishing, they would have something at least on par with their previous iteration, and they they didn't. It fell short, and like you said, like it was way past the time that it should have come out um, to be good or any good, uh, and just too much. So, so so bottom line is, uh, developers keep doing your thing, making good games, pushing them out there. PR departments slow down a little bit. You don't don't. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've thought of, okay, this game's coming out at this point. I, I remember very specifically, it was Rainbow Six Vegas 2. And I knew exactly when that game was coming out. I was going to go right to the Best Buy where I knew where it was going to be. I went there the day of its release, looking for it. Literally, I was pointing to posters at for the employees. Like, look, no, it comes out today. You see the poster? It's right there. It is supposed to be out. Let me get it. And it, it didn't come out for, like, it got delayed by, like, a month, and I didn't realize that. 
And you know what? I didn't get the game ever because I just forgot about it after that point. I was just yeah. like, oh, it just totally... And I love yeah. those games. So. Yeah, there is one game, too, that I can see why they might want to have pushed it a little harder to get it up earlier. And that's um, that we're still waiting for right now, which is uh, the Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U. Because that's a game should have been out at latest last last Christmas, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, if that had happened, or really it, sh- it needed to be out before the, um, before the PS4 and the Xbox One dropped. Uh, and if that had happened, we'd be looking, we would be talking about a very different uh, video game market. Like, Nintendo is starting to get back in with the Wii U now that Mario Kart 8's out, now that they're promising uh, Smash Brothers by the end of this year. You know, they didn't deliver last year or the last several months. Uh, now that they have a bunch of other projects, but honestly, this is a little late, guys. Everyone started getting the PS4. You should have had that out a year ago. Smash mm-hmm. Bros. should have been out a year ago. That's what everyone's waiting for. Mr. Mario Kart would have been nice to be out earlier. Some of the other ones should have been out uh, earlier than they are. Um, I guess, hopefully, it's going to be a really good game. Um, I think that they still have a chance, but that, that was one that I wouldn't have... I would have seen a smart move to put as much resources as possible to get that out last year. Well, yeah, I mean, get it out there with the launch of the system because you saw the boost when Mario Kart 8 came out, what we had. If they had one of those titles as a launch title, I mean, think about where the Wii U would be right now. Um, It'd probably be a lot bigger. And you know what? With a fighting game like that, you can release more characters later on through DLC if you're still working on some of those. You can make it free, though. Make it free. But and levels and stuff later, you know, you don't have to necessarily unveil the whole thing right away. So. Yeah. But I don't but, know what yeah. happened with that. Whatever. That's, but, but you know, let us know. know. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, is the delays good for games? Is it bad for games? Is it the developers or is it the PR company that should be, you know, we should be standing outside with torches and pitchforks demanding our game now? So, uh, <laughs> tell us what side of the fence you fall on this. Uh, let us know in comments down below, of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, and of course, Google Plus and Facebook. And I think that uh, just about does it for us for the evening. So, um, as always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint.